Uh, Bates Motel is another one that's um, been adapted for small screen. Yeah. This is another one I need to and watch. It's, <laughs> and it's, doing, it's doing a great... Yeah, you know, it's put it in a contemporary setting, but it still feels like it's... Set is it contemporary? In the 60s. Yeah. Oh. Mobile phones and everything in there. Oh, I did not... I assumed it's it was modern like... day, but it's got that look and feel yeah. of, like, 60s, because it's a back, backwards town, it's mm. a small community just, without freeway and things like that. I just so assumed it, it was in the 60s. <laughs> so, you know, um, just out of ignorance, you know American Horror Story? What mm. season's that on? Uh, it's got four. Yeah, right? The third one's just there. finished, yeah. and the going fourth one's... Into... Okay, that'll I, probably I watch... get quite far, because that reboots itself every season. Yeah, but oh, that's, yeah. that's how True Detective's going to work. I should, yeah. I should watch it. Apparently yeah. it's going to be uh, two AD detectives. Oh, yeah. True Detective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I like what they do with like American Horror Story and True Detective, anthologies. So mm. each season... I've always loved story. anthologies. Mm. I, I used to watch... Called Tales from the Dark Side, yeah. the old TV show, and the film. I love the film. Yeah, so, yeah. Just, just to throw, I'm a massive fan of Twilight Zone. Yeah. Uh, every, I know everyone it is, is, but yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so John like the Twilight Zone John's movie John's as well, the one from <laughs> the, the 80s is brilliant. I mean, it's what is four segments. It's what is it something die? really scary? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, film, it's a helicopter thing. Or something. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, the. That's what Probably isn't a fan of the yeah. The opening yeah. and the closing of that movie is brilliant. Really I think, yeah, it's so cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, man. Yeah. Uh, and like it was Steven Spielberg and Joe Dante and yeah. two other people who. John was, Lithgow did um, the the famous um, William Shatner role. Of oh the, yeah, the play the, the Terror yes. of Three Thousand Feet. Yeah. yeah. And he's great. Yeah. It's, it's just a great anthology movie. Definitely, yeah. it's got was, skewed, wacky humour. And they're doing, they're rebooting the Twilight Zone, aren't they? I think Matt Reeves is doing it, which is yeah, a good, he's a good director, but it's just going to be one. From last that last I heard, at least it was one singular story, like a feature length episode, which to me is any random. Like we saw the trailer for Transcendence, that could be a Twilight Zone yeah, episode, yeah. Um, Inception, any any science fiction. Because so it's just using the name. If you're going to use the name Twilight Zone, it should be three stories. At oh least yeah, do it. something like that. Do something so more I, interesting I do, with I it. Do love anthology films. Yeah, if people can recommend me some more. I do watch them. Like... Have you seen ABCs of Death? I have. Have you seen VHS? Yes. Yeah, VHS two. Yeah, VHS two is good. I, yeah, it's, <laughs> fun, it's fun, but you kind of like, uh, does it really work in the world you set up before? Because you seem to have gone. VHS 2 way is. Over. If you just, just forget about VHS, and VHS 2 is fantastic. The, yeah, I know which one you're talking <laughs> about, yeah. The one the guy from The Raid directed. Was it Gareth Edwards? Gareth Edwards? No, not Gareth Edwards. That's the guy who died Monster and is doing Gareth Godzilla. Evans. Gareth, Gareth Evans, Evans, that's it, yeah. He, yeah. That is, excuse my language, that is. <laughs> that is. <laughs> but it is. It really is, but it's fantastic. Another series which has just started on Netflix, Death Sold On. Yeah, yeah what's it like? Has anybody seen it? Yeah, I'm on episode two and I'm loving it. Uh, yeah. I was, I went into it sceptical. I love Dust Sold On, That's and I thought, I how can you stress that out over 12 episodes? And the way they're doing it is really good. It is following the storyline of the film, but it's flashing back to events that you didn't see and also creating a sub-story with extra characters at the same time and building mythology, which How? means that hopefully they won't do Hangman's Daughter as the second season, because that was garbage. How Is that much... the uh, third film? So yeah. yeah. How much are they following the plot of the film? Because obviously very, halfway very through the film... They, Is it like... They are... Does it like the first episode get to the Titty Twister? Or? Nope, the first episode gets them out of the convenience store. Right, so it is. So, so halfway through the season, there's going to Dragon be a no, dramatic, well, that, 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 dramatic I, I'd estimate it would probably be about six episode okay. six. That's, that's, so that's quite an interesting way. For people but who don't know, just till done. That's going to be really yeah, interesting to see. It's it. clever the way they're doing. It. I mean, I'm watching it, waiting for certain things to happen. Mm. But there's enough extra sub story that they're putting in that it's keeping me entertained and going. Oh, I've never saw it that, that well, perspective. If the sequels are as bad as everyone says, like the second season could go completely off but the reservation. Robert Rodriguez himself has directed the first two episodes. I'm not sure how many more of the season he's directed. I know he's had a heavy involvement in it and you can tell because it's so loyal to it but you can kind of see where he would have loved the film series to go to had he not abandoned it and left other people to so mess with it. Second one's that got uh, Robert Patrick in. Yeah. yeah. Oh really? I like Robert Patrick. Yeah I like yeah. him but he doesn't choose the best project <laughs> or isn't that how it works, however, like, but no, he's a, he has no choice. He's, he's playing the Harvey Keitel role of the preacher because in the second episode, you get introduced to the preacher and his family. Isn't so um, they've literally got 15 minutes into yeah, the original film in a one and a half hour? <laughs> nice. While we're talking about Rob Rodriguez, did you guys see the trailer for Sin City? Yes, yeah, I'm not convinced. Not convinced? No, I, no? Seen it. I didn't know it was there. Any, 
I'm, I'm excited. I'm more excited because it's know, finally happening. More because I know yeah. the material, and I can't wait to see the material. On well, some screen. of the material is there's some new material. Completely, the there. Jessica Alba, Nancy plot yeah. is new into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, um, it looks like Sin City. Yep. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm, like, yeah, I'm not really sold that it's going to be. And 300 didn't do anything. Shot in 3D. Yeah, uh, yes, that's nice because not not Rather enough than to shine through. It was, it was it was quite a bit, wasn't it? A lot. Well, it's, 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 it's Frank Miller hadn't got yeah. round to writing half of it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> true. But I'm, like say, I'm, what was it? 2006 in City, 2005 maybe. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. So it's nearly ten years in the making. A lot of cast and, I, I remember Angela Jolie. Yeah, yeah. Met Johnny Depp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Clive Owen isn't back. Don't know what the bloody hell Clive Owen. Thinks he's doing, <laughs> but he's more important. Well, yeah, to the, 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 very thing important is, the thing is, his character would look completely different anyway because the Clive Owen persona was after a facial surgery to change his identity. Yeah, but that was in the Innocent City. They referenced that. That cause Clive Owen is after the yeah. surgery. So, so if, if he came, if he came back, back for this story, it wouldn't be Clive Owen anyway. No. So it makes sense so it's not, not well, to be Clive yeah. Owen. Yeah. yeah, it would have annoyed me if it was Clive Owen to be like, well, no, <laughs> he's supposed to look completely different. So yeah. No one recognises him. But I say I'm excited to see it just because Sin City is is the first one is brilliant. Yeah, uh, and it's nice to they've got a great cast. They've got like Joseph Gordon Levitt and Ava Green. I imagine from the same cast and director from Three Hundred, Jessica Alba, Bruce Willis, Mickey Rourke's back, which he said he would never do, but he clearly needs the money. <laughs> Uh, Jeremy Piven is in it. Jeremy, yeah, I love he Jeremy is. Piven. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. I love him when he's with uh, John Cusack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Serendipity. Yeah. And yeah. What else is he in together? Uh, what else together? Uh, Gross Point Blank. Gross Point yeah. Blank. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. Oh, why did I not I think of that movie first? Yeah, Instead of Serendipity. Gross Point Blank is brilliant. Excellent film. But yeah, so it's, it's, it's probably going to be good. I don't think it'll be bad, but... Um, hmm. It's nice to see it's finally happening. Um, we're we're now literally approaching the summer season. Um, the summer season properly kicks off with Captain America. Anyone actually got a chance to go to the premiere last month? Uh, Jason, I it? did. Is it good? Well, this was the opinion no, I was excited is, to hear. See, this is this is difficult because as I said to you earlier, um, I'm not always a big fan of the hero movies because they always go the same way. Now. And so I always say the same response to everyone was, "It is what it is." And I enjoyed the action bits because I did enjoy the action bits, and it is what it is. But it is what you'd expect. And I did watch it because I wanted to see more of Shield, basically. But um, action sequence is good, but it is as predictable as you'd expect. But at this point, it's what you're getting in. Of course, mid credit scene, nice little surprises there if you haven't already looked it up online. And, yeah, I've actually, obviously, I can't attest to because I've not seen it, but I've heard a couple of the reviews I've read that this one does kind of book the trend a little bit of the superhero movie. And by one? having it being like more of a, it's still got the action movie tropes and stuff. It's it's got that political side to it as well with Robert Redford's character, which I'm really excited to see. Political how? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen it. This is just what I read. That this is, this uh, is... Uh, that uh, one of the reviews read say it was Marvel's smartest movie. It's a really. I, I suppose. In a way, you could yeah. say that. We'll discuss this after. I, I, well, yeah. I think, I think on, the next, tonight, on the next podcast, yeah. we're going to be able to compare and contrast two Marvel films because Amazing Spider Man 2 comes out in the middle of the April. I am not excited uh, for that see, film no, really, in the slightest. See, anyway, I'm I, saying I didn't like Superhero movies. I, did, well, you know, I do like them, I, but they're not smart. I did quite like the Amazing Spider Man. I didn't. I, I, I did. I liked Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone. The, it was flawed all along in the. Mm. It was telling you a story that you'd already saw ten years earlier. It was not even yeah. that, it was the exact same plot. Yeah. They just took they took the same screenplay and swapped out Lizard for Green Goblin. That was it, it needed more Willem Dafoe. <laughs> <laughs> as a power as, as villain. Oh, oh, oh. I want to be excited for Amazing Spider Man 2, but yeah. with the amount of different T V spots and trailers there have been, I feel I've already seen the whole film. Well, well, my, there, there was a trailer just for the Rhino there was a trailer just for The Rhino's in about three minutes of the movie. From what Mark yeah, Webber said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they're, they're going to build it to the Sinister Six. Oh. So yeah, I mean, they're trying so hard. So many, so many are spinning but... off their Spider Man franchise. I mean, Spider Man 3 has been announced for a release date. Spider Man 4 has already got a release yeah. date. Sinister Six. Venom. Venom. Venom yeah. um, then Fox are clamouring for as many of theirs. They announced yesterday Fantastic Four 2. Yeah. Which um, that's a way to Andy scotch Wolverine all those rumours that they were, were trying to get rid of the dire- director and recast it. Um, Wolverine 3, X Force, X Men Age of Apocalypse. I'm really Age of surprised. Apocalypse. 
Yeah, yeah they've got yeah. else to yeah. 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 yeah, no, it's Brian Sango again. Extension, clearly. I'm really surprised Hugh Jackman is coming back for another other Ian. I would well, imagine this has got to be an interview last, last month that eventually they're going to have to get someone Because what? We've got, <laughs> uh, there's Days of Future Past this year, there's, there was Wolverine last year, there is... Age Apocalypse 2016, yeah. Wolverine 2017. How old is Hugh Jackman going to be at that point? Yeah. You, you have to understand, I'm understand that yeah. Hugh Jackman doesn't age it does, yeah. very fast. But and my point is, well, to be to be the Wolverine, well, he has got to be the peak of human perfection, almost, you know? Um, I mean, they, they need, they're going to need their gratuitous shots. Well, of, you remember, it's a... People are very good at making people look younger than they are. I suppose, it's but like, surely an actor job. of Hugh Jackman's quality has got to essentially, eventually get bored of playing. How many times have they played the Wolverine now? Seven? Seven, I think. And there's Seven. another four more, three, three or four more coming. So um, gonna... Hugh Jackman is currently 45. 45, so in, by the time 2017 rolls around, it's going to be nearly 50. And he'll still look younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> you that, would make that, a good Wolverine. Said, <laughs> um, Robert Downey Jr. is 50 now. Yeah, but obviously you don't Iron see Man is a very different yeah. super, and he's left. Yeah. After yeah. Avengers 3, he's, he's gone. Robert Downey Jr. is gone, yeah. Oh, oh, so he survives um, Avengers 2 Johnny Depp is... Well, he signed for Avengers 2 and Avengers 3. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Depp is 50, and he's got Pirates... Someone needs to out. stop him, though, as well. Yeah, yeah, just, just stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all that problem with the Wolverine characters. He's not really supposed to age. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's not just that, yeah, but, yeah. like... I mean, what? It'll be 27, so well, who in general will play the characters of 17 years? Yeah. I'd kind of like to see someone else's take on it. I'm sure you'll see that as well. I mean, yeah. if, if we've got a brand new... Bloody Spider-Man after, <laughs> after a few years yeah. we'll do the same over him. See, I, um, going back to Amazing Spider-Man, sorry, Andrew Garfield is fantastic. Yeah. There's Peter Parker, he is brilliant. Even and as, as Spider-Man, Spider-Man he's, he's brilliant got the wit, yeah. which I, th- I feel Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man didn't quite have that banter, yeah. the wisecracking. I'm, so I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing him again in Amazing Spider-Man and I'm looking forward to seeing Emma Stone again as Gwen Stacy because they are hinting so much at the famous... Uh, yeah, I was going to say Emma Stone plot, the famous Gwen Stacy plot, which I'm surprised at. Um, well, I, 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 do, I think I think it's going to be a rug pull. It's got to be because it's. Th- th- I mean, there's there's pictures of her online wearing pretty much identical to what she wears on the cover of again a certain issue of Amazing Spider-Man. So it almost seems too obvious, and especially knowing what happened with Mary Jane. Yeah, it almost seems like they were setting up Shailene Woodley to come in in Spider-Man Three and. So may, do a whole um, mess of stuff it, that I won't get into. It may be expected to the people who know the material and stuff, but to a general audience, something like that would be pretty Espe- impressive. I suppose especially with being Emma Stone. Yeah, be, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. And like people would be sort of like, "Whoa, didn't expect that." Even though people who know the material would. Expect See, I was very so surprised I, I that like they were that, that they killed Captain Stacy in that like, quickly. Yeah. I was quite surprised at that. So, such, such a well, obviously, Captain like Charles. everyone knows, that's, that, that Captain Stacy is quite a famous death, obviously, and yeah. I thought they would save it for. Uh, then you've got the, end, the, Mar- the Marvel Cinematic Universe titles, or MCU as they like to refer themselves, um, which, you know, Captain America Winter Soldier. Mm. Uh, later this year we've got Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Exactly. So excited. Yeah. Been so excited ever since that was announced, because I've, I've, I've always loved and Rocket Man. And Man. trailer. Yeah. I just love The trailer was just so perfectly yeah. keyed. Yeah. Because people who don't know who they are, after watching that trailer, hopefully got the level of humour that it's all about, the mm. fun. The adventure. It's it's Marvel Star Wars basically. It's uh, I say I had I was quite a big Marvel fan, but I'd never read Guardians. Never, I had no when it was all these rumours a couple of years ago about like, they're gonna do Guardians of the Galaxy, like what the, no 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 one had any idea, you know? Um I did. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean, like it was only yeah, but even in the fanboy very, community, like not that many people. Niche. Yeah. Um, so it's really ballsy of Marvel to go they could have done another they could have easily done another Hulk movie spin off Black yeah. Widow or something done something a lot safer but so instead they build the Guardians of the Galaxy is essentially building to Avengers 3 but, but, yeah I was going to say because um, of having introduced the Thanos. universe in the Avengers mm-hmm. it does make sense for them to try and expand upon yeah, it yeah it is really because otherwise if you just keep throwing the universe out of the Marvel Universe and just the Avengers films it's going to be a bit like well where did this come from yeah, yeah. it's definitely so a really expanding out this separate franchise over here to feed in I'm really excited for, just from the trailer alone I'm really excited to see 
uh, those characters interact with the Avengers. I'm not gonna lie, when Iron Man came out, I never expected it to actually pull something like this off. What they've done, yeah. which is to build <laughs> yeah. their universe it's, in on screen. It's like the, the I didn't think like, it was doable. You know. DC, uh, like, oh, well, we'll have to put Batman into a Superman film to make it, oh, and will people like Wonder Woman, what do we do, what do we do, and Marvel's Marvel. going, here's a raccoon who talks yeah. and fires a gun. DC, <laughs> the a trend on eggshells, DC, they, they really, need I mean, to go out and do it. You look at the amount of Marvel films that are coming out, I mean, we've also got, like, Ant-Man next year, Damn, we've got Avengers Age of Ultron, we've got... Ultron. They're already talking, <laughs> they're already talking about a third Avengers Sorry. film, they're talking about um, Doctor Strange... Doctor Strange. You know, yeah. the, the, talk about Hulk movie again. They've got so many mm-hmm. ideas out there. Captain America 3's already got the release date of May the 6th, 2016, which is exactly the same date as the one DC product, which is Man of Steel 2. I mean, Batman Man of Steel 2. I mean, Batman Wonder Woman, maybe Green Lantern, we don't oh, know. Might, on, Bat of we might shoot one. Batwoman Bat of Steel. Bat of Steel. <laughs> I really love to go back to the first Just this week's Bat of Steel, and we don't. To go back to the first episode of this podcast, I love the rumour. The Rock is going to play uh, John Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be fantastic. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I just, I just like to cut in again because I realise I sound a bit maybe like Winter Soldier was actually pretty good. I realised I did sound a bit. Well, negative. There was a round of applause at the end of um, yeah. the premiere. Really? Really did. Yeah, yeah. And there was no one who was involved in the making of the film in the screen. So that's a very American thing to applaud the screen. Yeah. And I, the I was just like, wow, that's, well that's amazing. I was once in the cinema in the States, uh, 2006 maybe, uh, States on a plane. And my, this, this is obviously a certain line that Samuel L. Jackson says <laughs> at one point. Literally, the Get entire these mo- monkey loving snakes off my mother some, something along those lines. Yeah, literally, <laughs> the entire theatre started clapping. Don't know if it happened, it happened when I watched it in the Odeon as well. Really? In Norwich. Yeah. In Norwich. <laughs> Fair enough. This was it's in... probably just about a film, man. The, yeah. thing is, <laughs> the thing is, though, with the level of business that film did, five people clapping isn't really that expensive. Oh, it, was, it, was a full, it was a full theatre. <laughs> I thought everyone who watched that film knew what it was and went for it for that very reason. Yeah. yeah. That's why. I went to watch this film more during a vacation to Disney I World. I hope you didn't fall six weeks It was really good. I like Snakes on a Plane. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, a good it's, fun film. Yeah, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Loads of people go, oh, it's a bit, it's a bit B movie rubbish. It's like, well, exactly. It was supposed to be. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, never never criticise a film for being exactly what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Criticise a film for being Transformers okay. 4. That's what you criticise a film for being. I don't know. For being I'm a like, Michael Bay production. Wait, you, uh, uh, wait, let's wait and see until Transformers 4 comes out. You don't know. I will I watch. Do you really Transformers know. 4, actually? As, 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 Mike, as Michael Bay directed it? Yes. Okay, and I know what to expect. I, see, I don't like that. I would I'd like, like, like to wrong. wait, at least wait. I watched the trailer for Transformers 4, and... I thought it looked. I thought it looks good. I think it looks fine. I, I mean, I don't have the um, the uh, childhood nostalgia aspect to it. I watched a bit of Transformers when I was a kid, but nothing, not not, not much. And so <laughs> I really, I really like Transformers, the first movie. I think that's fine. It's got Steven Spielberg clearly had quite a lot of say on it, and it's got that Steven Spielberg ishness to it. The second, the two and three, granted, diabolical. I know, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there, just because there's like one scene in number three I really enjoyed, even though the character wasn't what he was, where was it Shockwave, he did a bit weird, was just destroying that entire skyscraper and they had all the people sliding around, and that was kind of fun. Is that after about 45 minutes into the film? Because that's as much of that film that I can uh, think it's towards the, the end. Final, it's just sort of really fun, because you know The final it's 45 stupid, minutes but, of Transformers, if you forget about all the characters, and forget actually who they are, yeah. then it's, it's it's a really good action movie. Sorry, <laughs> I'm swearing again. Um, but like, there's a point He's where... He's the like, funk. There's a, there's funk, a yeah. point when Optimus Prime is like trapped in a net, and despite the fact he's got a flaming sword, <laughs> for about 10 minutes. <laughs> well, 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 genuinely, you take it out of context, and it's a fantastic action sequence. <laughs> but when you've got Optimus Prime just like dangling it's funny I, I, like, I will watch the fourth one and even if so I don't I, enjoy it for the benefit of winding up my co-workers I will say it's the best <laughs> film I've ever seen one or two co-workers in particular <laughs> the first Transformers film for me was juvenile Michael Bay nonsense it had his level of like pandering to oh let's look, could do a close up of someone's ass crap see I like the idea of it like being someone's robot, first car ro- robots yeah. urinating on a government agent to Optimus Prime oh, saying to it's my bad which is all dreadful dreadful filmmaking and 
then the franchise went worse after that. Because the, the second one notoriously came after there had been the writer's strike, so Michael Bay came up with the idea himself. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Bay never come up with an idea. Oh, God, yeah. You, you, you are Three. worse. Is, is I, don't, one one I don't think he's a bad Robots. director. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's a bad director. You know, Michael Bay, bizarrely, directs action sequences that, how I like them to be directed. He, he moves the camera... But you can always see what's going on because it's very fluid movement. Mm. He's always on rails. He there is doing rail a couple shots. of great tracking shots. He doesn't do shaky great. camera in the face and like all that. Everything is perfectly directed action-wise. He just can't direct people. See, he, doesn't get, he doesn't get a human performance. Trans- and, yeah, the, for, for the Transformers far all human element does look pretty bad, to be fair. Transformers 2, I was going to say, I found the scene where... Optimus Prime fights a bunch of Decepticons in the forest quite difficult to watch. Really? I really like that, actually. too much, and I, I was like, Fair I'm, I'm half asleep, I can't follow what's going on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not excited about that when it comes to blockbusters, but is there any, is there any blockbusters over this year that anyone's got Godzilla. huge shots for? Um, How good yeah. does Godzilla look? <laughs> yeah... I've, I've so only, so I saw that so. tease trailer with the power sending down, then I saw the full trailer, I found it's the third trailer, don't want to watch it, don't want to watch it anymore. I've heard the third trailers the yeah, you, reveal something. You, is that the one that's playing in the IMAX at the minute? I don't know. If not, I don't yeah. think it is. No. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's one that's just been released about uh, a fortnight ago. I, I, there is a bit at the end. I had been drinking and I did decide I really want to see what it was that everyone was telling me not to see, but then I couldn't find it. Cause it so, so Drunk fun. Jason has now progressed to just watching drunk trailers Jason you don't want to see. Drunk yeah. Jason now wants to make Sober Jason have them spoiled for him before he gets to watch him. Why am I speaking in the third person? <laughs> I am quite... There's, obviously, there's the obvious ones we've mentioned already, um, but I'm quite excited for... Oh, what's it called? Godzilla. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Rise of the Planet of the Apes was... It just sort of came from The trailer nowhere. for that was... No, that one, was re- as well, no one really expected how popular that film became and how good it was. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It was a good film. Yeah. It was absolutely yeah. amazing. I mean, you know, Andy Serkis... Yeah. Acting He's directed with, now. Acting He's under that CGI. Yeah. yeah. For Universal. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he gave John a Carver's solid performance. Yeah. It was Elba. I've heard. The shit card. That no. is great casting. <laughs> so, Disney time. Yeah. <laughs> With Planet of the Apes, you know, I've seen the the trailer one. I don't want to watch any more trailers. Definitely. That's yeah. it. That, that was it. That's one of those films that avoid all trailers for. There's a great moment in the trailer where it's like Gary Oldman shouting, I need to talk to Caesar. Yeah. And then it's like, it's like 10 years later or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like, and Shivers down your spine. Yeah, so the virus is properly, yeah, yeah, broken. I love that. I, that sorry, that is one of my favourite mid credit sequence ever. Oh, in yeah. the mid credit sequence of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, they kill off the entire human race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that Anybody who left early, early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a great little end credit sequence. The, yeah, the yeah. dark travelling all over the world, but that is. <laughs> it's got to be like the, there's dozens and dozens of films about. The end credits of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's great because loads of people thought, uh, the hilarity because it's, it's Dick of a Neighbour, uh, he's now going to die, uh, 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 and then walked out thinking, uh, what a funny ending, and not actually getting the yeah. message. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame that, because... Yes, uh, his Dick Neighbour is now going to contaminate humanity yeah, because pilot, he's a yeah, pilot, yeah. and now everyone is dead. It's a shame <laughs> because I really like David Hewlett I know, from um, Stagger Atlantis. Yeah. Is, uh, Have you ever seen his... Um, uh, is it a dog's breakfast? No, but brilliant it's got film. Paul McGillian in it as well. Yeah, it? yeah, it's a brilliant I really want to see personal that, yeah. project kind of film, and you yeah. can get that it was just a case of like they went, you got some mates, get your mates around, yeah. and let's just film it. That was a really that was a Stargate time doing. It's not very really often you get that. <laughs> Stargate got to ten seasons. It did, yeah. Throwing that one out there. <laughs> Ended about fifteen that's years ago. Have you seen this? Did Star Trek: Next Generation go? I never watched. Seven. I love Jim Luke Picard. Never watched a Star Trek episode. Luke ever. Picard. You should. Oh, I may have seen an episode of Enterprise. Now, seven seasons. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I now stopped watching that Enterprise one. Enterprise Four. Voyager. Sorry, a bit of a track nerd over here. My problem was that <laughs> Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise all lacked Riker's beard. As did sometimes. So did, the next se- so did season one of Next Generation. Yeah. It got good once Riker grew a beard. Yeah, which is why it was six seasons. <laughs> I was rewatching. Um, I've been rewatching. Next gen, and when it got to season two, that very first episode, it kind of skirts around Riker's beard and then just pans up and you see his face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it doesn't show him like at all, and then it just pans to show it. It's like, hey, he's grown a beard, facial hair in space. And it's, it's a huge thing because how many people have facial hair except for Klingons? Something I've been rewatching recently, I've just got to season four of Chuck. And season three of that is phenomenal. The Brandon Ralph arc in that yeah. is fantastic. 
And uh, Zachary Levy, Levi, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's Levi. Levi, Levi, has been talking a fair bit about a Chuck movie. Yeah. Uh, he he wants to make it, and from what I've read, uh, Yvonne Strahovski and Adam Baldwin are on board. And I'm sure the other guys aren't really doing anything else, to be fair. <laughs> um, so I imagine everyone would be on board for it. Uh, but I think Fox have the rights? Maybe? I can't remember. But uh, they obviously... If, I think if I think there would be enough fan response for it, and I think a Chuck movie to return to that world after the way they end, they leave it. I mean, I have no doubt that the way they end the film is actually end the TV series is good. Yeah. Um, but I would love to go back to that world one more time because I Chuck is uh, is one of my favourite ever. TV Which shows. on the subject of. Recent film got released from a Kickstarter project that you were... You're in the I haven't seen it. I've not seen, seen it, it yet. Not yet. Well, with the closest place playing it is freaking Leeds. And I don't want to go to Leeds. You could buy it on <laughs> iTunes on the day it came. Day, oh, okay. Day yeah, it yeah. 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 I should probably finish this. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'm still... I, I'm waiting to hear well, your I've, response. Well, I've been watching that. I've been watching some Legend of Korra, which everybody go watch the Avatar Last Airbender TV series and then watch Legend of Korra. Legend of Korra is some of the best television on air, and it's on Nickelodeon. So it's, you would love it, and you're not really not watching it, despite me. And uh, I know that's exactly the reason. Yeah, I'm exactly going to do that now. You really should. Until someone else recommends it. Maybe. I know. I'm going to get like Cor- Corrigan and watched it. I'm going to Corrigan to talk to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> Avatar: The Last Airbender. Anyone who's seen the M Night Shyamalan movie, no. that is a disgrace. It's a mess. It is. But is has that, anyone is, seen just, the just TV like, series? No. I've caught no. the odd episode, but it's all really... on Netflix, and it's really, can, can really good ask, watching. Um, is the movie as much of a travesty to that universe as the Dragon Ball movie was to the Dragon yes. Ball? Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> the first, the first season of Avatar: The Last Airbender is quite childish, and it's very Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, but season two onwards, um, it becomes some of the best story, some of the best like hero journey storytelling that I've ever seen. And Legend of Korra uh, is a sequel to it after the uh, long after the events of the first the first show, and that is much more mature. And I cannot recommend it strongly to anyone. You mean enough? Enough. enough. Strongly. Yeah. What did I say? Just said you I cannot can, recommend I, I, I can't it. Can't it. <laughs> yeah. Full stop. Don't watch it. I, I, sorry, yeah. I, I reversed cannot, my argument instantly. <laughs> I cannot recommend it enough to anyone. It's on Netflix. The three of you have got. No excuses. Uh, so yeah, let's have some Netflix, please. <laughs> yeah. We've got two. We, we, we've we've had Dust Till Dawn's on Netflix. Yeah. And now Chuck got... is on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. American yeah. Horror Story is now on UK yeah. Netflix. Yeah. That's where I'm watching. Yeah. The League, no. Yeah, The League's on League. Yeah. yeah. I actually I watched the documentary League. on there the other day, The Pixar Story. It's oh, I watched like, that. It's, you watched it? I watched it. It's kind of like the official Pixar documentary. Yeah. Because it's, it was done all in house. A new one. It was about... 2007? Something, yeah, the woman who directed it is doing another Disney one called The Imagineering Story, which is all about the guys who build the theme parks, which I cannot wait for. It's like, do I like 2017 or something like that? Uh, but it's, anyone, if you don't know the story of Pixar, it's, it's pretty on the surface level look, uh, like the first five or six years of Pixar. No, oh, until about 2006, when The Incredibles comes yeah. out, Incredibles yeah. and Cars. Um, it's, it's a really good look, because it talks to John Lasseter and Steve Jobs and Pete Doctor, Leon Critch, all these... The brain trust of Pixar, Andrew Stanton's in there, and you realize how much how much of a genius these people are. They may not have. I mean, Andrew Stanton's gone on to do a thing like John Carter, but which is a fine a movie in my opinion. It's coming back. Yeah, yeah but like, well, looking at them and how they talk about their movies, they are geniuses at what they do. I just wanted to quickly check. It doesn't mention anything about you or Woody. I yes, to, I love there's a lot Woody. of like there's a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, he was amazing. I don't know why they changed him. To See, the re- one of the reasons Toy Story Two is my favorite Toy Story film, which is controversial for some people. But they came in. Uh, John Lasseter had just worked on A Bug's Life for about two, three years, not had any vacation. Came back from uh, the press tour of Toy Story Two. No, sorry, came back from press tour of Bug's Life. Saw what Disney were doing to Toy Story Two, and. Uh, John Lasseter took it off them and then in nine months they crafted what became Toy Story 2 mm. and that is a work of uh, is a work of genius in my opinion I love uh, the idea of you, you know, the speech and stuff yeah. he's, he's trying to motivate 
people to go anyways like I know you've been working on this definitely I've been away in your I think we're months. kind of treading onto the theme for next month so maybe yes. we can come back oh, oh yes yeah. so oh, when you're here <laughs> homework project I need to go uh, by Brave so I can hate on it yeah homework project just for those of us who haven't watched it to uh, get watching that you're Pixar watching. Um, Pixar story, yeah. story. Yeah. and also ne- ne- to- next month we're going to like discuss in a bit more detail before Rob <laughs> leaves us for Pastures New <laughs> on Pastures Disney animated movies and particularly Disney and Pixar I, you, um, I'm going to go by Brave <laughs> <laughs> I need to rewatch it so I can hate it you know the Japanese company is it Ghibli or Ghibli I say Ghibli. I say Ghibli. 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 Well, I was going to say, I'm going to watch loads of Ghibli films just to talk over Rob's love of Disney. Fantastic. <laughs> well, moment of shame. I have only ever seen uh, one. Which, the, the animated... Have you seen one? Arietti. The animated <laughs> movie's theme... Sorry? The animated movie's theme is going to tie in to um, the quiz theme, which um, City World in Sheffield ran their first quiz this month to great success. Pioneered by Case over there. So, Case, <laughs> take a virtual bow to the listeners. Bow. <laughs> I actually bowed as well. So really sort of I nearly got too creepy when you bowed. It <laughs> we, was, we had a really successful night. Um, lots of positive feedback, and it's something that we're going to be doing every month in the cinema. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't in, uh, involved with the quiz in the slightest, uh, but I attended, and it was a very good quiz. Thank you. The questions were very good and good. stumped good. me when I shouldn't have. <laughs> Well, oh, that's what I was sorry, just on. to go back to the animation, oh, no. let it go is playing outside. <laughs> I would just, there we so, go. I'd just like to point out. So, that. we're all in an animated mood. So, yeah, yeah. next month we shall be talking I'm a bit more I'm seriously going to go and buy breaks so that I'm fresh. <laughs> no in one's my trying age. to stop you. <laughs> no, you people are. Trying. People are trying to stop me. Jane, one of my supervisors, asked me about this and I ranted for about 20 minutes and she was walked away and was like, I'm not going to ask him about that again. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'll be watching Brave again so I can counter his arguments. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I think it was that bad. I'm going to go do some research. And, uh, and I'll be dig out, digging out the little MP3 recording of one of the yeah, staff yeah. oh, who I'm, told, told I'm, I'm Rob her question. opinion. <laughs> I, I had a Marvel question that I was thinking about like last week. Yeah. Um, because they are building towards um, like all the different phases, phase three and whatnot. Uh, Doctor Strange, I've always been interested in. Mm. Um, and the casting of it, they think... Johnny Depp, obviously Johnny Depp's not going to do it. I think it needs to be a big name. You know who, Vigo Mortensen? Yeah. You know who was caught in it years ago? I don't necessarily want this person to do it, but it's another name in there. Patrick Dempsey. Oh, yeah. 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 Of all people. Yeah. 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 I could see it, but I would want a high quality actor to do it. I don't know why, but I really want Matthew McConaughey. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but, but so for some reason he looks can like he be as long as he's using like as long as he's using like a, so like, as as he's using like a southern accent I can't quite see him with a southern drawl <laughs> no oh, right. I don't know yeah I don't know it's right. also right. supreme yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's how he that's how he yeah. I'm Stephen Strange the master of the mystic arts <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wouldn't no, quite work for me. No, but I, I, I think the he, 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 might, he might do a super mm-hmm. film. McConaughey? Yeah. You think at this point in his career? Would he, would he go back to something like... I not that I'm saying know. like it would blow him or something, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is... Uh, uh, but true. like, um, he's done the big budget... <laughs> he's done the big <laughs> budget studio flicks in the past, you know, of like Sahara. Yeah. Not yeah, had the greatest... He's, he's uh, never kind of tacked onto something like... Like Marvel. Which like, has got a momentum. He's always he's tried to kick like Who, could, who would he play? Who would Matthew McConaughey play? Pick if, a superhero if now. You, if you had to pick a superhero. Actually, I think he could take over Robert Downey Jr. He could be a good Iron Man. Yeah. Mm. I thought that about a year ago. Well, it was originally meant to be Tom Cruise, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Was, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Oh, man. Did, did I show you the, the new Empire cover? No. It, it is Tom Cruise. As, it is all, as, as Tom Cruise. As Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah but I, don't, just, I don't think Tom Cruise makes a very convincing Tom Cruise. <laughs> There, there is just loads of pictures of... of is he promoting Cruise. something? Or is he going to film that, is he? Cruise? Not, not for a while, I don't think. Mission Impossible 5, I think, so. <laughs> Maybe he's just promoting himself. Just, it, 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 just think, it, it just seems like Empire don't think there's uh, but, but any good films. To be fair, they had so. a pretty good cover last month. You know. Yeah, but then they had bloody X-Men before that. That was Someone's... fine. Can we wrap up by saying, like, maybe our favourite? Because we've been famous comic book movies. Just go yeah. to, like, our favourite comic book movies. Fav- Ooh, yeah, you've oh, still you're excited to debate right now. You should have asked that question. Uh, X Men Two, X Men Two. Done it again. Long. Yes, X Men Two is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sick of X Men Two. I regret this. It's a great um, 
it's got the serious side of things. I like the stuff like the Dark Knight has, and it's got the comic booky side of things that like stuff like Amazing Spider-Man has. It's got Colossus in it. It's got a great cameo from Colossus. I find it hard to separate out because there's so many different variations. I mean, yeah. you know, Road to Perdition is a comic book. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but I think I, th- yeah. I think I'm going to have to say Scott Pilgrim. Oh wow. Boom! Yes! <laughs> See, now I'm struggling to find anything remotely annoying or controversial. <laughs> Wanted. You can put Constantine. <laughs> Cut, hey, you know, let's not hate on Cut. That's fine. That's a good movie. Hellblazer TV show uh, looks a lot better. Yeah, I don't think it that's, does. That's I right think right. it looks clean. It looks awesome. Is he a scouse? He's British. He's Welsh. Person. He's blonde. I don't know. I, I quite like the Killing Kennedy's movie. Mm-hmm. I quite like the Killing Kennedy's movie. I, I like it. I like that it's they kept, great, the, they kept the feel and they kept the style. I just felt that it didn't quite... I, had, well, I read an interview with Francis Lawrence, uh, the director, and he said, they asked him about it, and he was apparently uh, handcuffed into making a PG-13 movie, and then they got slapped with an R rating anyway. Yeah. So if, if going in, if he'd have known that they were going to get an R rating, it would have been hard R, and it would have probably been brilliant, but it's kind of existing in this... Um, mid-range PG-13 R rating movie now and so I, I, I would lo- like to see I, I hope the TV series is fine but uh, I don't know it doesn't it looked shiny you know it didn't look clean it looked too clean cut so case uh, comic book movie but Batman and Robin <laughs> <laughs> and on that note <laughs> uh, yeah, probably probably uh, the Tim Burton Batman yeah. it is a it's a, see, it feels like a very safe choice now that you two have nabbed themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be really boring with mine and just go for Sin City. Yeah. Good choice. Sin City's a, really it's enjoy. Enjoy. It's a very solid film. See, the, the best kind of movie, bar none, is Dark Knight. I know oh, you hate it. This might but... be a good time to end it. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I think it's the best. It's not a my, favorite. My girlfriend is calling me. So, so. Hello. <laughs> we're, 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 hello. We're, we're just finishing right now. <laughs> Means that the most. Well, yeah, this, ask Cassie her favorite. Ask, be on the, on the podcast. ask what her favorite comic book movie is. What What is your favorite uh, comic book film? So I can put it on. <laughs> Take like a phone in live. Yeah. Oh right, she she said uh, the the yet to be made um, uh, adaptation of Why the Last Man. <laughs> that's that's like okay, that's a that's a good call. Yeah. Uh, Dan Trek, the job. guy uh, the guy who's making that is uh, Dan Trachtenberg, and he did a podcast that I listened to quite a lot. They don't know anymore, but it's. It's quite interesting to see a guy who was became really popular doing this podcast, and then he made Portal No Escape, the fan movie, and then he's gone on to doing The Wild Last Man. That's quite interesting, I think. So, tweet us, tweet <laughs> us what your favourite... Just, just <laughs> <Rob's fact. laughs> tweet us what your favourite comic book adaptation has been at Film File UK, and we might mention you on the next show. Um, I'd like to thank Jason, hey. Case, and Rob Cheers. for joining me today around the table. Uh, be sure to subscribe and tell your friends about us we want the listeners and a stale cookie